Uh, for the Native News Update today, uh, we're talking with Joanne Robertson. And uh, Joanne, we want to do a little bit of an introduction, uh, self-introduction. Let us know uh, where you're from and uh, how you're working with the Water Walk, which is the topic of our subject today. Hey, um, my name's Joanne, and I'm the coordinator of uh, uh, Mother Earth Water Walk this year. And um, my band is uh, White Fish Lake. I took him at Shang Anishinaabek, uh, just by Sudbury, Ontario, and I live in Sault Ste. Marie, and that's where the main office is for the communication center for the water walk this year. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit, because some of our watchers are going to be very familiar with this, and some aren't, but for those that aren't, tell us a little bit about what the water walk is supposed to be about. Um, the water walk, the, they're trying to raise consciousness about the water um, and it's starting it's coming from all four directions so they're collecting salt water from um, Hudson Bay um, the Atlantic the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico and they're carrying it to um, kind of sort of the center of Turtle Island uh, which is Lake Superior the largest freshwater lake in the world and uh, they'll be joining there on June 12th with uh, the four salt waters from the four directions. When you look at a Google map from outer space, uh, the Bad River Reservation looks just like, it, almost right in the center almost, you know, if we don't want to measure it real closely. <laughs> uh, where did the idea for the water walk uh, come into play? Uh, we know we, we do know on our end that Josephine Mundaman uh, has been doing this for a number of years, went around the Great Lakes, but you know, whose idea was it, you know, or collectively or whatever, about the four directions? And why is the four directions important? Um, Jonas would probably be better to ask that question too, but I believe um, people were starting to have dreams about this, and they got together at the lodge and started talking about it, and, and started sharing their dreams about it, um, water coming from the four directions. Um, and that's, that's my understanding. I don't have a lot of information on it, but, um, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll talk with Donis about that, but let's go to the ground forces. Uh, what's on the ground and, and where are they? We're going to show people the GPS if they're showing up on there. We'll show the four directions map. Uh, tell us about the ground forces. The first route to leave was from the west coast on Washington. They seem to be moving right along here. Tell us mm -hmm. what you know about that. Yeah, they're doing really well, and Donna, she's working with the West really close, so she can give you that update. I'm okay. working with the South, the East, and the North. Okay. So let's um, start at the South, where they were okay. walking around floods. Yeah, they they started on the 20th. That was one year since the oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So that meaning that start date had a special meaning. They um, they walked through. 130 tornadoes and it was really sunny where they were. They weren't aware that there was so much going on around them. Um, they also have been walking through flooding and now they're getting a little a bit further along. They're uh, approaching St. Louis and um, it's really hot and humid. It's been in the 90s but they said the, uh, the floodwaters are drying up because of the heat and the animals are loving all the extra water. But they also had another problem. Their GPS unit broke down. So for the last four days, walking through levees that we thought might breach, um, tornadoes, they, they were without, um, especially through the flooding, they were without a GPS unit. So we had to do a lot of cell phone calling so that we always knew where they were at. But just last night in Festus, they picked up a new GPS unit. Okay, so, we'll be able to see them again. That's what I was saying. We knew we, we could see the western walkers, the eastern walkers, the southern walkers were off the mark for a while. In a way, all that water might be a blessing in a way. It's almost, you know, because all the tornadoes and everything that has been going around them, they've been, from my understanding, relatively safe. they got to keep their wa eye on things. But there's water everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and someone like the water walkers would say, you know, in a way that's a blessing. Isn't it kind of a cleansing? I mean, I, I've seen pictures of uh, rivers and lake ponds that people have walked by filled with trash. Some mm -hmm. of that gets washed down. Maybe it's all in the Gulf now or Saint, uh, headed toward New Orleans. But isn't that one way that Earth might be cleansing itself as well? 
That's what we think. Yeah, Mother Earth is cleansing herself. Yeah, so um, it's probably a good thing, but it's still frightening when you're in it, walking past it, wondering if the um, levees are going to breach. And I just tell them to hang on to the pail because that has the GPS unit on it, but they didn't have one. But <laughs> the people who are walking through the mountains in the east and the west, that's what we always told them. If you fall down the mountain, don't let go of the pail because right. we'll find you then. <laughs> we'll find you from a satellite. Uh, you got some phone connections or emails for people, anyone that's down in that southern area. You, you're telling me they're around where, getting into St. Louis, Missouri, getting close to it? They're getting close. They're just south of there. Um, they just left Festus last night. Um, they really need walkers down there and staff carriers. Right now it's just Sharon Day, the lead walker, and her sister Doreen. And um, Kathy from St. Louis joined them yesterday and she's staying with them today. So they really need help. They're, they're going to have to cover a lot more mileage once they get to Iowa. And then into Wisconsin, we're hoping that a lot of the people from that area come along because we really going to give them the miles then to make up for um, just the couple of walkers right, and the few right. extra they've had. So of the contact information, this weekend Jennifer Weber is uh, going to be compiling all the information that she's had from contact so far. Okay. So um, her email is j.weber, w-e-b-e-r, dot m-n at gmail.com. And she also has a cell phone number that you can sell or text. And it's area code 763-464-2790. Okay, good. We'll have people, we'll put that up on, on uh, the panel here so people will have that when they're watching the show. Let's go to the east. We're already six and a half minutes into this thing. Okay. It seems to me there was a very famous pair of feet hanging out of windows. I thought it was Sharon Days all taped up with from blisters and all that kind of stuff. Excuse I think that was Carol Martin's feet okay. in the last. <laughs> Carol Hopkins, sorry. Okay, well, it's a very famous pair, pair of feet right <laughs> at the moment. Let's go to the East Coast. Where are they at? Okay, the East, they just crossed into Quebec yesterday from Maine, and they're approaching uh, Sher Sherbrooke today. Uh, they're getting very close there. And um, Josephine Mundaman, who's traveling with them right now, along with a couple other grandmothers, she'll be leaving them tonight and making her way to the north for a send-off. Um, there's a big gathering being planned when they reach Ottawa on the uh, 20th and that event will take place from 10 to 2 and within at noon there will be speakers. Grandfather William Commando will be starting the speakers there. Um, if anyone wants to get in contact with the West they can email me and my email is the East. Fiddlehead. The I'm East. sorry, that's right, sorry. Um, and my email is fiddlehead at sunet.ca. So that's F D D L H E A D at sunet, S O O N E T dot C A. Okay. And then Do you I have can. a cell phone on that route to anyone? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Sorry. I heard they had a wonderful send off over in Maine there at uh, Bad Falls or something like that. At the falls, yeah. The, um, there were the, I uh, hope I say it right, Passamaquoddy people That's and the B5. Yeah, the Beehive Collective were there, and they had a beautiful send-off. Good. Yeah. yeah. And what date is the uh, northern route from Hudson? Uh, we prematurely said they had started out, but what they had done is to start out to go up to the Hudson, I believe. Yeah, it's a long journey just to get there. So um, they, let's see, um, the send-off from Churchill is May 21st. Um, but like you said, they've already started working their way towards there. And, that, and they'll uh, board the train at 7.30 on the 21st to make their way to Winnipeg. And they'll be arriving in Winnipeg um, on May 23rd at 4.45 p.m. And the people in Winnipeg are planning a big event for that evening. And then the next morning on the 24th, uh, there's going to be a bright and early pipe and song at the Forks. And then they'll be on their way. Then we're going to hope that APTN is going to be there to broadcast that as well. Do you got a phone number or connection for that northern route if people want to join in or meet them in Winnipeg? Yeah, there's uh, a million contacts, but um, uh, sorry. I'll give you Debbie Daynard's, but she's traveling right now. Okay. They have um, her email is ddaynard at hotmail.com. Um, 
but also if they wanted to email me, there's uh, contacts in Winnipeg, Winnipeg to Fort Francis, Kenora to Duluth, Duluth to Bad River. So there's a million contacts in there, and I can forward their information to those contacts. Is that Western route, Northern route going route to converge in Minnesota there? Do they come together at that same um, spot? <laughs> Yeah, in Duluth. Okay. Yeah, Thomas could probably talk more about that. Okay, let's do that. Let's uh, change seats over and we'll get the Western route. And thank you for joining with us today. We really appreciate it. Miigwech. Uh, bonjour. Um, my name is Donis Kennedy. I'm going to want to go to the Gijigok Kwe. I'm going to go to the Gijigok Kwe. I'm going to go to the Gijigok Kwe. I'm going to go from Rosa River Anishinaabe First Nation. I'm Martin Clan Ojibwe woman. And my name is uh, Happy Day Woman. I've been involved with the West, uh, especially through Montana and now into North Dakota, doing a lot of the planning. Uh, Tina Cookman Miller, she was really, really helpful in Washington, and they had a really good start up at April 10th. They've been on the road uh, from Olympia, Washington, and they've been walking steadily towards Bad River. They're through the mountains, and we've had a rotating uh, crews of walkers. So we've had many walkers that have come in and helped us get through and we've had a lot of communities that have supported us all the way through. We've had support walkers and we just really want to give a good props out to the people out that way because they really helped our walkers a lot. Miigwech. You came through Yakima? You came through yeah. Blackfeet? Yeah, the Yakima Nation, they sent a limo to bring our walkers to their, to their longhouse. And then we went through, there was so many communities. There's Flathead, they walked us Flathead. all the way through, put them up in the resort. Um, you know, they were really, really liking it there. And there was the Blackfeet Confederacy. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did a magnificent job of bringing their whole community together from Alberta and Montana to meet up with the walkers. And there was Rocky Boy. Uh, we got put up there and there's walkers that have come with our other walkers through. And oh, there's so many. There's Fort Belknap, Fort Peck, you know, all of the communities all along. We've just found they're meeting them at the edge of their territories in force, uh, in ceremony, in their regalia, with their families, with their grandparents, with their kids. And they're saying, we will walk with you through our territory. That's and beautiful. then they connect us up with their cousins and their relatives that are in the next community. It's really exciting. They're taking really good care of our walkers out there, and we really appreciate it. Give us some contact information from that way. We only got about a minute left on this. This is how fast this goes. Give us some contact, and we'll get out of here, and we'll do this again next week or so, okay? Yeah, you can contact me at Donis, that's D-A-W-N-I-S, dot waterwalk2011, um, that's 2011, at gmail.com. And we've got a crew of organizers, and as soon as you let me know where you're from, I can forward it on to the person who's taking that section of the route. And just want to say with my last minute that we appreciate every single walker that was on the walk with us. We had a crew, we had Shelly Essence, we had Sylvia Plain who came for three weeks from Toronto, we had Josephine Mandaman, we had Carol Hopkins and Celeste, Noah, and... Nijik, and we had also another crew, Pauline Shirt came in from Toronto with, um, there was Diane Boucher and S Celeste Ortiz and Paula Groves, and right now my cousins are there, my aunt Lucy Ducharme, Anna, Jody, her little two-year-old daughter, Edie, and we've got another crew coming in from Winnipeg that's leaving on Monday, so, and there's three extra seats for anybody who wants to jump in. We better get a hold of you. All come into the Bad River Reservation around June 11th, 12th, 13th, somewhere in that area. Yeah, and we'll be converging with the North and Duluth on the 7th. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for joining with us on the Native News Update uh, today, and we're going to do this again, Donis. We really appreciate your time. Oh, miigwech. Miigwech.